need you. We need him always, every hour, I need thee. Acts chapter number one, missions on Sunday number four. That tells you that if we had three ahead, and this is the last one, it's getting later in the year. It's our last fifth Sunday of the year, and we started something uh, back in 2021, and so it's been a couple years that we've done it, and, and really highlighted missions on a Sunday because it really is the flagship part of our ministry. It really is all that we really want uh, for the church to be involved in, the Acts 1-8 church mission. Uh, and so uh, the last couple of years at this time we would have had um, Center Shop Ministries and uh, Pastor Aaron Shear, missionary, of course, to, uh, to the world and to the, the states through uh, archery and, and has traveled all over the countryside when I contacted him <clears throat> to let him know we'd like to uh, put it off for this year and look at some things different for next year. Uh, he said, well, that, I'm going to miss you guys terribly, but I've been on the road, I think he said 144 days at the time, and that was before the third quarter of the year, so that meant that he had been away from his home for probably 60 to 70% of the days of the year, so um, I'm sure that he's welcoming the rest, and uh, so I'm, uh, I'm, in, uh, I'm in for this sermon, and I'm in it with you and for you, and, and so missions on Sunday, number four, we're going to highlight salt and light, and I'm going to speak about it in reference to uh, where we have been together for the last couple of years, um, that in uh, January of 2021, I put before you the Acts 2 Project Vision a place of uh, refine the mission. We, of course, last May, we looked at our one year out. It was, uh, let me see, 364 days. It was one day less of one year in May of 2021 when we looked at a preview of our anniversary that was coming toward us and spoke a little bit more about the mission and vision of our church. And then... Uh, came to the first of this year, 2022, and spoke some more about the Acts 2 project and the vision for our church and our ministry. And, and then, of course, May was our, our celebration of the 25th anniversary. I'm going to highlight all of those pieces uh, for us and lead us to a place where then we'll have a, a sermon at the end. So our message today has two parts. It has a really half the message is about the Acts 2 project and the vision and a renewed awareness, or maybe an awareness for some of you for the first time, or you've heard it two, three, four times, you go, ah, I get what you're talking about. I see where salt and light fits. I understand this Acts 2 project piece. Acts chapter number 1, though, let's start there. Here we are, Acts 1, verse number 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto, both, unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. Let me remind you of who's saying this. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And what shall you be? Ye shall be witnesses unto me. Those two words are everything in that verse. Unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and the unto the uttermost part of the earth. That is the Acts 1 8 church mission for every single church. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get into our message and looking at some of the things that God has brought us through and have been upon your church's heart and upon your pastor's heart. Father in heaven, we thank you for your scripture, for your word, for your commands and the great commission. We thank you that you've empowered the believer to be salt and light in this world in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us purpose and focus for heightening our awareness of what 
is so important to you, the vitalness and the importance of missions and mission work for the church collectively and, of course, for all of us personally. I pray this morning in our message that as we walk through things and some highlights of things uh, that have been before us as a church for a couple years, that we arrive at the end of this realizing in our sermon time that we abide in you, God, and we have been called by you, God, and we truly have an assignment, and we do not take it any more lightly today than we did the week after, the year after, the moment after we were saved. God, heighten our awareness, increase our desire. I pray, Father, that you will work in all of our hearts to be salt and light. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Before you, again, the Acts 2 project. Turn to Acts chapter number 2. Let me pick it up in verse 41. When I presented this to you, of course, in January of 2021, again, it says, I'm saying to you, let me remind you. You say, I've heard this before. Let me remind you. Repetition is one of the best teachers for you to realize what you're part of. And you need to grab a handle on this. Sometimes as a pastor, you sometimes as a, uh, as a shepherd, you wonder if people are getting the vision. Maybe it's upon me. It's on me. It's my fault. As a shepherd and a leader, I'm not speaking to you clearly. I'm not giving you the clarity that you need. Possibly I'm not acting it out and modeling it for you the way I ought to. It's possible maybe that uh, as much as I think I'm saying the right thing, you're not receiving it. And it's a great test for us as pastors and leaders, as Bible teachers, as leaders in our homes and our lives and the communities we are in, that in order for you to find out how effective you are as a communicator, it might be good to ask somebody, what did you hear me say? What did you take from what you heard today? What was the one thing? And if I asked 100 of you and you gave me 99 different things, I'd be scared. Pastor, you're a mess. Well, you know I already am a mess. But I'm just saying that the communication has to be in the Spirit of God, by the Word of God, and it has to be right on point. So what am I doing today? Missions on Sunday, number four, salt and light, is our focus. But I want to just hit four different times over the last year and a half, almost two years, that we have spoken of what salt and light is about. Because it should be our everyday life. And it is embedded into the early church mantra, it's embedded into the letters by Paul to the churches. And of course, even in our, church, our study in the church in Corinth, it's there quite a bit. Acts chapter number 2, let me pick it up in verse number 41. We will highlight 46 and 47 in a moment. moment. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Added to them, to them is the apostles and Peter and John, out of just those first few verses before verse number 41. 3,000 souls were baptized after being saved. Verse number 42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. Don't you love that? They continued in the fervor of their salvation. Verse 43, and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. People were going, what is going on with you people? They're transformed. They're brand new. They're redeemed. They're new creatures in Christ. Verse 44. And all that believed were together, had all things common. I love that. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, verse 46, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, with one accord in the temple, with one accord in the temple, with one accord in breaking bread from house to house. They were one accord in the temple and house to house, breaking bread, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, a beautiful piece of the unity and the beauty of what the Holy Spirit has done, that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ has done. And what happened in verse 47? They were praising God, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily as should be saved. 
When we read through that, we're reminded that they were in one accord. They were in one in Jesus Christ. In one accord, Acts 1.14, they all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication. Acts 2.1, it's right in front of you. And when the day of Pentecost was come, they were all with one accord in one place. Of course, verse number 46, one accord. Acts 4.24, and when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast thou made, hast made heaven and earth and sea, all that is in them is. Acts 5.12, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were with all, with all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Acts 7.57, and they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. One accord is a pretty powerful statement. It tells us that in the Lord we are one together and we then have the ability to be in one accord. To say, okay, I got that. Okay, pastor, this Acts 2 project, I, I see what you're talking about. So this whole idea of today, salt and light, we've got, of course, missions on Sunday, number four. We've got us looking at, hey, this 2021 start out, what was it all about? Well, it was about us saying, okay, how much further can we go? Well, we need to refine the mission. We say, okay, how much further will we go? Well, we started using this phrase around here, let's refine the mission of the Acts 1-8 church. We have a mission, but we refine that mission by saying, okay, God, how would you have us to have vision anew, vision from the Lord? Well, refine in the Bible simply means remove the impurities, the unwanted elements from what you have ahead of you. Remove the stuff that's going to get in the way. Refine, improve, purify, clarify, clear, cleanse. Let's refine the mission. We found in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1, verse number 3, a great theme verse for the three pieces of our purpose, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and your labor of love and your patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God our Father. What, what does that mean? Well, it simply means this. Live faith, love others, declare hope. Ah, oh, that's where that came from. Yes. January 2021. We hit that a little bit in December of 2020 through the Christmas time and the celebration of the coming of the King. And then we looked at, at the beginning of 2021, what will we do in this Acts 2 project vision from being an Acts 1-8 church and having a mission? Got it, Pastor. I'm with you. Live faith. Love others. Declare hope. So we landed there and we said, okay, we're off. We're off to the races. We're off for the Lord. We're doing that. What you would have us to do, Lord? Got it. The Acts 2 project clearly before our eyes. So then here we are in missions on Sunday number 4. And you're saying, okay, back to salt and light. Yeah, we're here for salt and light. What does salt and light mean? How does it work? I'm glad you asked. Hang in there. We then had our... 25th anniversary preview, as I mentioned a little while ago. It was good to exhort each other and to challenge each other and say, hey, in the edification of the body of Christ, God has been really good to us. It says in verse number 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. God's given this church 25 years of favor from the very beginning when the founding pastor started it back in 97 all the way to now. But we looked at it at the 24th year and said, okay, We've got 25 years of favor coming. What's the preview? Well, let's make sure that we understand how good God's been to us. And I declared and made a statement of, again, who we are as a church. Based upon the Acts 1-8 church mission, the Acts 2 project vision. God's favor has been upon our location. Our location makes a statement. We still can't quite get over that, and no one can, to say that, yes, this is a spot, there's no other church on Adams Dairy Parkway. Have you driven up and down the parkway? They got more new houses and more new things, and man, they got this thing going all the way down here and all the way down there. This is the only church here on Southeast Adams Dairy Parkway. We, I think we surprised them a little. Yeah. 
They weren't surprised when things started going up, but they were surprised like, oh, you're a church. Yeah, we're the ones that brought it together, and that was an incredible vision of God upon, again, the founding pastor. We see God's favor not just in the location, but in God's favor is in our purpose. It is on our purpose. God has given us great favor upon our purpose, and that makes a difference. If you have a purpose founded in the Lord Jesus Christ, it ought to be a difference maker. We then see that God's favor is on our mission. We do have the right kind of mission. We do have what God has called us to do, and he has said this is what we should do, and our mission makes a testimony. It really, really does. And then lastly, up on the screen, it says God's favor on our vision. Our vision makes a heritage. What will we leave here and leave behind when we are gone? That heritage has to be on the Lord Jesus Christ. We finished and looked at that challenge and said, okay, Lord, this is what you have for us, the favor of God upon our lives, 25 years of God's favor. It's God's favor that's done the work. And God is blessed and God has done so many things and we're so thankful. And again, I will be having a thank you Sunday and a ministry appreciation Sunday here at the end of November like I do to thank all of you for how God has worked through you. This mission is on Sunday number four. Again, back to salt and light. Again, we're continuing to say, okay, if you don't reach anybody, if salt and light is not important, if you and I do not give the gospel to people, if we do not invite people to Jesus Christ, then all of you, when you get old, will go away and there will be nobody left. Is that what you're thinking the gospel is all about? Jesus started this all 2,000 years ago. And Jesus is still keeping it going. And Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, it is the name that saves. It still says that. It says that in Acts chapter number 4. That's the name above all names that saves souls. And so missions on Sunday number 4, we come to January of this year. We say, okay, what did you put before us then, Pastor? Well, I said, here's our next steps. What would be our next steps? Well, we continue in what we're doing, but we turn to Acts chapter number 4. And we say, okay, God, what more could there possibly be? Well, <laughs> there is salvation in any other, neither any in any other, for there is none other name under heaven. Get among men whereby people can be saved, where men must be saved. But you go to the end of Acts chapter number 4, verse number 31, and you say, what's these next steps? Well... Verse number 31, follow along. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. Born again believers, the first church, getting thrilled and excited. And what do they do? They speak the word of God with boldness. If they're doing it there 2,000 years ago, all the more conviction upon us that we ought to be doing it today. They continued in that setting, of course. In verse number 32, the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. They were, again, of one accord, all things common. It takes a little bit of work to do it, but the thing that commons us together is the Lord Jesus Christ. It transcends everything. And verse number 33 tells us, with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any other, excuse me, any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands, houses, sold them, bought the brought the prices of things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. You see the incredible life change that happens in the name of Jesus Christ to the believers. Oh, that was back then. That doesn't have to happen now. You have the same Holy Spirit in you, believer. The same Savior saved you today. So why would we not then invite people to that same thing? That's throughout the letters to the church. That's throughout the word of God that we have this incredible Savior. We have this great grace. We have this great power. So what is expected of us? What is expected of you? What is expected of us? What is expected of you? <laughs> Simply put, we're to live faith 
love others, and declare hope. When you and I live faith, we have decided Jesus Christ has changed everything in our lives. We now want to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We then learn how to love others. That means we love others here. You say that's out there. No, declare hope is for those out there. We are to love others here. Other believers. The body of Christ. That's what Paul found to teach us in the letters to the Corinthians, to the Thessalonians, to the Ephesians, on and on. Well, here's Dr. Luke writing the same accounting type of things that happened in the early church. I know this is a Jerusalem time. We want to get to a place of Antioch in chapter 11, 12, 13, and see how they sent out Paul, Saul, and Barnabas. We know that. But when putting that before you in January of this year, I said, hey, there is a great expectation. What does it mean when something is expected of you? When somebody expects something out of you, you have to do something with it. When somebody says, hey, I'm waiting for you to do something. I'm anticipating and looking forward to you to do something. Very simple synonym is an act or state of looking forward to some event or some occurrence. Are you, do you have any expectations of God in your lives? What is expected of us? And if there's expectations of us, which is in the Word of God, and you look through them, you go, oh, okay, expectations of me, expectations of you, you're expected to live faith, to love others, to declare hope. And when you see that expectation, it ought to inspire you to go, you know what, God? (laughs) I need to get a stronger desire for those things that you expect out of me. I really need to grasp a handle on your Word and on those things that please you. Of course, then we came to this year's celebration. We look at the 25th anniversary of 2022, and we see again God's favor, the years of God's favor, 25 years. You say, well, what happened there? Well, we had an incredible celebration. We had a great preaching message, had a great gathering. You guys had all kinds of, all kinds of food on May the 1st, and had a great time. May 4th, we came in here, we did some singing. What a time, what a joy we had to sing some old songs together, 25th anniversary celebration on that Wednesday. And then on that Sunday, May 8th, I spoke to you. And I spoke to you a a message about how we ought to really see what God has before us. And again, when when I think of all that God is expecting out of us. And what God has before me and before you, I realize this, very simply put, that hey, we can do better together. Remember, before the Acts 1-8 conference, that I was preaching a series on Be Better. You can go ahead and advance to that. And we were looking at that. We said, oh, okay, that Be Better part was really a big part of how we went from January 2022 to May of, uh, May of 2022 and said, okay, how can we be better? How can we be better? I'm just putting some things before you to remind you that if you've been listening and hearing and tracking, then coming to you and saying, hey, salt and light on missions on Sunday, um, yeah, that, that seems to be a good fit. Yeah, 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 I could, I, yeah, I guess we need to be better evangelistically. We need to be better at inviting people to Jesus Christ. We ought to be better. And of course, I highlighted Hebrews chapter number one, verse number four up on the screen. That tells us, of course, that Jesus Christ being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. It led to the statement and the title of that message, which is we need to do better together. Let's make this better together. I ask you, do you ever evaluate yourself? Do you ever take the time to take an inventory of your desires, your determinations of life, your purposes, your focus, and say, hmm, spiritually speaking, I don't know if I'm doing my part and I need to do more. 
God, I need a heightened, again, I said it earlier, a heightened desire for what you expect out of me. Because this missions on Sunday, salt and light, goes to the very essence and very core of our complete belief system. What do you believe about Jesus Christ? I believe so little about him that I would not invite anybody to Jesus as far as I know him. I wouldn't tell anybody about Jesus Christ. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't know. My relationship with Jesus isn't that great, and I don't want to tell anybody about it. In fact, you know, I, you would never say that. But maybe by our actions we're saying that to Jesus. Maybe... We're somehow trying to hit home runs for Jesus Christ and we haven't even walked into the batter's box to get some BP and learn how to hit. We've decided that this mission that we're supposed to be on as an Acts 1-8 church is basically left to everyone else. Well, if 90 out of 100 people say it's up to everyone else, And salt and light is not something that you find yourself in your own life to desire to be. You are to be salt in other people's lives. You are to be the light of the world in other people's lives. I am to be that. You see, when it comes to missions on Sunday, go to Act, excuse me, go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. I want to give you a short little sermon in the midst of our package here. And while you go there, I want to really highlight some stuff for you about how salt and light can really work. Because I'm going to use some verses in our study in 1 Corinthians 7. You say, well, you did that marriage stuff last week, and there's a lot of marriage stuff here. But Paul interjects verses 17 through 24 to say, hey, you abide in God. You are a new creature you're bought with a price, do you know? And he repeats that phrase a lot. Do you understand what's before you? Well, your church decided a while ago that we would make an effort to invite people. And when Brian Calloway came to preach a series back in August of 2021 on Take It Personally, that wasn't the first time that you heard something evangelistic or something about soul winning. Pastor Bobby has spoken on those things. Randy has spoken on those things. I have myself. It's like having the Acts 1A conference in Christ alone, and Pastor Grace says, you know, this, this is a great theme, and I find myself often as a preacher and teacher not even putting Jesus Christ in the middle of the message, in the center of it, in the back, in the front, and everything, just kind of adding them together. It's like the same thing about soul winning. Well, let's just add that in. Let's just add in that invitation to people. Let's just add it in. When we come to the invitation at the end of the message, it's not just an add-on. We turn some music on so that there is an attitude of prayer and worship. We have a time of prayer collectively, and we say, you're invited to spend time with God alone, either here or in your seat. It's a matter of the heart. Sometimes when you make a move and come to the altar, it just brings a little bit something more to the commitment of that invitation. Well, here's salt and light. Here's something, well, you know, Pastor, if you would just tell me about it, then I would show up to do it. How about today you just decide, and I just decide, that I'm going to be salt and light every day of my life? And there'll be days when I'm not going to do it very well, but there'll be a lot of days where I'll invite people to the things of our church, to the things of God, to the things of Jesus, and invite them to the gospel. So where is it that we're missing it? Maybe I'm not doing a good enough job. So here I am to tell you, from this point on, I'm going to do all I can to do a better job. I'm going to do all I can to put things before you even more so. But you're going to have to take up responsibility just like me to do that which God has called you to do. I have you think about this real quick. When you think about all the stuff, in fact, when it says up there, I believe, skip one or two, go a couple, but one, yeah, there it is, beautiful, good timing, awesome, salt and light. You say, that looks like a piece of uh, paper there, like a brochure. Well, it is. 
we took the time last year to put together some printed material, salt and light. You say, is that different than the calendar thing? I'll get there in a minute. Hi, my name is Bobby Bonner. A little taller, a little cuter. Nice to meet you. My name is Mark Brown. I'd like to give this to you and, and invite you to come to church sometime. Where do you go to church? Oh, First Bible Baptist Church over here, 1441 Southeast Adams J. Parkway. Oh, it's right down the street on Adams J. Parkway. Oh, yeah. Here, take that. I'd like you to have that. That invitation means a whole lot more when I say it and then I hand them something. You say, is that the key to everything? Why don't I just put it in their door or maybe I stick it in the toilet paper roll in the men's bathroom? Cheater. Well, I gave out a track. I know. Come on now. This is an invitation. I'm inviting you to go where I go. Do you like going where you're going? Do you like going to church here? Two of you do. Praise the Lord. I'm glad. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're here. I'm glad. Do you invite people to where you go? If you were to invite me to your house, I'm sure you would go to a lot of trouble to make sure that I knew where to go, got some directions, and maybe even had a written invitation. You say, well, that's old time. I will tell you, it's getting to a place in our lives where the written, printed material is more effective than it ever has been. Because so many people say, oh, you're invited. Did you get that evite? Did you get that text? Did you get this link? Did you get this? And people don't get it. You hand something like that to somebody, you say, I preached on this last week. A couple weeks ago, in Christ alone. A couple weeks ago, the message, in Christ alone, special offering. A couple weeks ago. Did everybody remember that? <laughs> you don't remember. <laughs> Next week, memory quiz. Okay. The invitation... You say the salt and light thing is right on the front cover. Yes, we took the time to do that. It's very, very important that we have that type of stuff. You say, what about this calendar thing? Can you pass those out? We bought an extra two, three, four hundred of them for you to use. Now it's October and you see them all out there and everybody's going, well, what am I going to do with them? Well, it has similarly the stuff on the back, but in here is a calendar of things that we do. We got a thing at church, thank you, Sunday. We have missions on Sunday today. We've got a Christmas production on 1211. You can use this and hand it to somebody. If you gave it to them back in April, they can say, oh, happy five soccer club starts, Resurrection Sunday production. These are the things going on in our church. You hand it to somebody, and somebody can use that to say, hey, I forgot what you told me about coming to your church on that particular day, but you gave me the calendar and it helped me to know what was going on. Just like this printed material there that's down there that's salt and light, you say, well, does it doesn't have the same stuff. No, it doesn't have the calendar. It just has an invitation for somebody to come to church. But this is an invitation to something particular that'd be going on that you would love to have them come to. You say, how much further does that go? Well, a few years ago, we made an investment of almost $15,000 on these. $15,000. Your money, your tithes, your offerings on the gospel tracks that we have. How many of these have you handed out with an invitation to someone to the gospel of Jesus Christ? Why did you go to all that trouble? This cover is a Blue Springs cover. It's got pictures of the tower in Adams Dairy Parkway right out there. It's got pictures of downtown Blue Springs. It's got the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ inside here. It's also got other pictures inside of Blue Springs. We went to that kind of trouble for you that you could make an invitation and hand something to somebody and say, here, I'd love for you to come to know Jesus Christ. I did a number of years ago, and it was the best, greatest, most important decision of my life. Let me tell you about it. Let me invite you to Jesus. We forget, don't we? The importance of an invitation. You say, Pastor, you allude to it once in a while. Yeah, I do. But maybe I don't do it enough. We went to the trouble of spending similar type of money, thousands of dollars, a few years ago to make some New Testaments. We had a few kids over the years in BBSC 
that we were able to give them one of those, uh, ADP Sports. And of course, we have this one right here, the New Testament. You go to somebody and say, here, let me invite you to the Word of God. It changed my life. Someone handed me my Bible in 1983, the first Bible I was ever, ever given. I've said this before many times. I read the gospel, excuse me, I read the book of Romans and I got saved by reading the Bible. How many of you got saved by reading scripture? Would you raise your hand? Should be all of you. Come on. Come on. All of you had to read scripture sometime. Didn't somebody show you the scriptures? Oh, I know. You came out of your mom's womb and you knew the Old Testament. What? You had to read scripture sometime. There's an invitation sitting right here for you. It's always around. I couldn't find any, Pastor. Give us a call during the week. We'll give you a box. We'll give you whatever you need. The point is this. Salt and light goes on all day long if you want it to go on in your life. There's the clean heart track. These are like the greatest to give to little children. It says in the back, a clean heart for you. Before reading any further, turn to the slate on the back and write sins that you can name. Lying, cheating, stealing. They should be things you have done. Write that down. And then you begin going through the track with a kid or an adult. And how Jesus Christ can wash all your sins away. And then you walk through this track and you talk to the people about how they can be born again and how the Bible says, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, renew, renew, renew a right spirit in me. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. This is an invitation to children, to people of all ages. <laughs> Salt and light every day in your life. You don't need a bag of stuff in the lobby where Pastor Brian set it up for you. I know we have that in place as a strategy, but you don't need that. It goes on and continues with the different invitations you can have. Go ahead there, B. It says up there, and the next one, Vacation Bible Sports Camp. You can invite people. This year I'll have printed material ready, ready to go this spring so you can go invite people. I'm going to make an effort to be better in this area. I'm going to get you what you need. The next three up there are three children's sports. Happy Five Soccer Club, Mighty Mites, Pee Wee Football. All three of them, boom, boom, boom. What if you had a pamphlet, maybe a little brochure, a couple pages that talked about ADP sports and children's lives? Sure, I would invite people that way. You can invite people with a link to the website, but what if you had a piece of paper that was really well done? You go to the adult sports. Do you know that we have co-ed volleyball? I'll come back to that in a second. Co-ed volleyball for adults. We have men's softball, and we have co-ed softball. So think for a moment. A lot of you could invite people. You say, well, I have to play in order for you to invite. Most of you, I don't want you to play. I don't want you to get hurt, okay? But you can invite others. Why can't you? And if you want to play, come on down. It's pretty scary. Some of, them are, some of us are not so good. And then you got Brandon Talbert trying to hit the ball 300 feet over everybody's head, cheating. No, it's, it's beautiful to see people of all different age groups. When you go back to that spirit day, spirit and cheer clinic, back a couple slides, we have had that for a number of years. We took a break on it this year. When it comes back, there's a culture of people that plays all these different sports, and that's why I say you can reach a different bunch of people with each one of these sports. If you had a piece of printed material out there, what a beautiful blessing it would be. When you go beyond that, there's a, a triad of things that come up. Thank you, picnic, faith, and family field day, and of course, dinner theater. All three of those are collective and corporate efforts by missions to be able to invite people. We didn't have the thank you picnic this year because really what I love to do is be at this point next year in June or July where we're inviting the community around us and saying thank you for allowing us to be here. 
You say, was that going to be an opportunity for someone to get the gospel? Yes. But it's also an opportunity for you to be salt and light. The dinner theater, murder mystery theater. Those are opportunities for people that maybe don't want to come to a church service, but they would come to that. And they have an opportunity, again, to hear about Jesus Christ. You see, missions on Sunday number four brings us to a salt and light simple little thought. That salt and light is really powerful and strong, but it is something that can be done very simply. It's that we forget that we have great grace and great power in the Lord Jesus Christ to do so. 1 Corinthians chapter number 7, again, there's a couple verses nestled in here, in verses 17 through 24, as we say our message today is missions with salt and light. I'm just going to take a few minutes. I've got about 14, 15 minutes here, and I want you to see in light of January 2021, May 2021, January 2022, May 2022, with the Acts 2 project before us as the vision of our church, as the Acts 1-8 mission of how we are founded and how we are strong in that area, I say to you this salt and light really is something that has to happen, and that's missions thinking with salt and light. You say, how do you find it here? Well, it's nestled right here in verses number 17 through 24 as we are in this series, and I'm praying through this going, what a neat fit, because it tells us that in Christ we are free to be able to go to other people. Free. We're no longer in bondage and slavery to the sin of this life and this world. Once we got saved, we could go to other people. Pick up with verse number 17 with me, missions and salt and light. But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all churches. Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing but the keeping of the commandments of God. What is he saying? Let me just interject a little bit before we move on and continue. Very simply, Paul is saying this to the church at Corinth. You are lost, you're of the Roman Empire, you have the Grecian influence, you've got a mess on your hands in Corinth. In the first 16 verses, we talked about marriage, we've talked about fornication, we've talked about what, know you not, that you're the temple of the Holy Ghost, we've talked about and, and preached through the civil matters to be handled in the church, we've looked at the ministers of Christ and how they're supposed to be proved to be faithful, we've gone through so many things, the disharmony and disunity. And what Paul is saying, new believers in Christ, that after four years of this church starting, four to five years, you've had a mess in a lot of areas. One of the areas is you thinking, hey, I have a certain social standing, I have a certain setting that I'm in, and you know what? I have to change it all once I get saved on the outside in. Jesus changes you from the inside out. Well, I have to be a certain status in a certain social setting to give the gospel to somebody. No, you don't. You're in Jesus Christ. And he said, oh, well, if you were circumcised, you need to be uncircumcised. And if you were not circumcised, you need to be circumcised because us proselytes did that and converted to Judaism, and now we got saved and see, we're better than you. That got Peter in an awful lot of trouble with Paul. To bring the law back in, to abide by the law after salvation. Paul's saying, uh uh, you are free in Christ. You were a slave at one time, you were in bondage one time, now you're free in Jesus. Well, I need to leave my master. No, you don't. Well, I need to leave my wife. No, you don't. You can still continue. Because you're in Jesus Christ. He continues in verse 20 down through 24. And let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it. If you're a slave or a servant to someone, don't worry about it. You're born again now. But if thou mayest be free, use it rather. If you've been freed from your bondage or your obligation, fine. Go. Verse number 22. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's free man. Likewise also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. You're bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. Wow. 
God set you apart. He saved your soul. You're now born again to be salt and light in people's lives. This is missions with salt and light. Your sanctification is to make you a new creature, a new creation, filled with the Word and filled with the Spirit of God. It's not to change your social standing or your relational standing or your marriage standing or your, vo or your financial standing or anything. What God has done for you through the Lord Jesus Christ has put you in a place where He's saying, hey, be who you are in the space that I've made you, but I'm going to make you new in Jesus Christ from the inside out. Oh, I need to get a different house now that I'm saved. I need to drive a different car and go to a different church. You're in Jesus. And it should not change the burden nor the responsibility you have to be salt and light in other places people's lives. It says in verse number 24 to be reminded, let every man wherein he is called abide therein with God. You are in God. <coughs> you are in Christ. This will affect your salt and light ministry personally and ought to affect us in salt and light. Is it possible that we want everyone else to do what God has called us to do? Because God's called every one of us to be witnesses. God's called every one of us to put away the old man and put on the new man. There's realities for salt and light, and I just want to show, just show you three of them really quick, and I'll be done. The reality of salt and light first is that it is more than just a social movement to invite people to things of God. You say, well, I get this, it's about the gospel. I got that, but then you want me to invite people to things that are going on in the church, okay, and I got that, and you want them to come to church, and you want them to come here, and, and so I, I need them to come to socially what I'm doing. I, I need to have this more of a social movement I didn't say it's not important for you to communicate to others that your life in Christ is totally different. But let me just say this. In fact, I'll read something that is in my notes. When Christianity becomes too closely identified with a social movement, it stands in danger of being watered down and contaminated. Think of that. Are you content where you are as a Christian in the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Let your conversation then be without covetousness and be content with the st such things that you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Okay, I'm good with what I have. I'm good with what God has done in my life. I'm good in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to go to my friends that I know that aren't going to church, that don't know Jesus Christ. And I say, you come to my church and everything will be better in your life. Now you've conflicted the message. How about if I invite you to know that Jesus Christ is the one that will change your life completely? But I'd love to have you come to church. I'd love to have you come to some of the things that we do. I'd love to ha introduce to you and give you the opportunity. We have some things. We have these sports things. We have weekly gatherings for different groups. We have Bible studies. We have small groups. We have all these places. And those social things are important. They're very, very important. But you know what? Salt and light is more than a social movement to make people's lives better. But, you hear what I'm saying? The world that you live in has programmed you to make, make Jesus Christ like the fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth or tenth thing that you talk about. Well, everything will be better. Really? How about if you say, my life in Christ is totally different and you need to know the Savior of my life, the King of my life, the Lord of my life. I need to introduce you to the Word of God. I invite you to a Bible study. Could we try that? Could we try that? Because we're inviting people sometimes 
only to a social networking system that never ever is centered on the Lord Jesus Christ. You tracking me now? Maybe you're not. Paul the Apostle is saying that they wanted to have their lives changed out of the mess they were living in in Corinth before they could do anything more about it. He said, you ought to be thankful for what you have in Jesus Christ. Go. The second thing I want you to see in the realities of salt and light is this. It is more than a Christian exercise to invite people to the gospel. It's more than a Christian exercise. Exercise would be good. The Bible tells us that we're to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. I got that. But what I see here is this. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Whatever state you're in, they're with to be content. Get after it. Be a servant, not of man, but of the Lord. It says here, strictly, clearly speaking, art thou called being a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayest be free, use it rather. He said, well, I like to work out. I like to have exercise. That's fine. But the reality of salt and light is that it's more than Christian exercise to invite people to the gospel. It's hard work. Is that why you're not doing it? Is that why you quit and gave up? You say, you don't know my life. I don't know it. And so if I'm wrong on your particular case, that's fine. I'm speaking about it generally. Because I'm not meeting a lot of new converts to the gospel. So what are we doing? Is it a Christian exercise? Is it something that we do for a social movement? Jesus Christ came, died, was buried, rose again according to the scriptures. He will change your life, make you a new creature in Christ. May I invite you to that? You don't want to invite people to that? I hope you do. And it doesn't have to be an organized event in order for that to happen. Paul has been focusing on marital status for believers to work through. And he's saying, look, I get all of that, and now that you're born again and saved, it doesn't mean you have to change your status immediately. You need to plow through it. The same with being converted and sharing the gospel and telling people. You invite people to the gospel because, again, it's so significant to your life. It's not just a Christian exercise. It's more than that. It's inviting people to the things of God. I want to invite people to Sunday morning church service to hear the church Teach them about what God says in his scriptures. I want to invite them to investors. I want to invite them to young families. I want to invite them to something. Are we inviting people to Jesus Christ? And the reality of salt and light, lastly, is that it's more than an obligatory duty to invite people to Christ alone. Now, it is in Christ alone. And obligation is important, I agree. And duty is important. So again, in each one of my statements, it's, I'm saying it is more than Christian exercise. It is more than social movement. It is more than an obligatory duty. It's more than that. It really is. Salt and light is more than that for every single one of us. We must have Jesus Christ be the one that changes our why in Christ alone. Please stop giving up so easily on your witness for people. It was great to hear Maddox Hughes speak about the burden that he has for other people, for the gospel. He's a 17, 18 year old young man, senior in high school, which is crazy. I'm glad it's a burden for him. I really am. Because he has a burden for souls. And he invites them to things that he is part of because he's being salt and light. We need about 200 more of those. Are you following me? You see, frequency here is good. More people doing it is good. Because it comes back to, hey, 
For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise also he that is called, being free, is Christ's servant. You're Christ's servant. Born again, you're Christ's servant. Invite people to your house. Invite them to the things you do. Talk about Jesus Christ with them. It's okay. You don't have to talk about everything else. You can talk about ministry. You can talk about how you're serving the Lord. You can say, hey, I'm bought with a price, and I'm not a servant of man anymore. Brethren, let us, it says in verse number 24, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. Not bad. Thank you, Paul, for interjecting this in the midst of dealing with marriages, relationships, divorce, remarriage, separation, and all that. He says, hey, the reality is this. It's more than an obligatory duty to invite people to Christ alone. Invite them to Christ. Invite them to, in Christ alone, I'll take my stand. In Christ alone, I will live my life. What a beautiful thing. Do you really, I'll just say this, maybe you've lost track and we've all lost track of what the rewards will be like at the feet of Jesus Christ. Because it'll be nothing like a soul winner's crown if you were to win people to Christ. Oh my. I've got two questions to finish with. First one, why wait for more scheduled events to be salty in a lost life? Are you salty in someone's life? Ye are the salt of the earth, it says in Matthew. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth, thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out, to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light into all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Why wait for more scheduled events when you can be salty or shiny? Why wait for more evangelistic sermons? Do you have to wait for one? You don't. Why wait for more evangelistic sermons to be shiny in this dark world? Will you and I decide that we are going to not wait for scheduled events to be salty and are you and I going to not wait for evangelistic sermons to be shiny in this dark world? We truly are the salt and the light of the world believers. Let's go after it a little bit more passionate and with a little bit more desire. Would you please bow your heads for a word of prayer? With your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed and we're finishing up right here. Our sound person is going to start playing a song. It's I Surrender All today. To be salt and light, what a change that would make in our community, in our lives, that if each one of us saw the importance of it and actually had a greater desire. Our Father in heaven, thank you for your word and thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you for what you've shown us as a, as a church in the Acts 1-8 mission of our church, that we are witnesses unto me, which is unto you, Jesus Christ. Thank you for clearly showing us that we are to refine the mission, to take next steps, to live faith, to love others, and declare hope. I pray, Father, in this time, in the name of Jesus, that you will work in the hearts of your people as you've worked in my heart, even more so, and that, God, we would not wait for an event or a sermon to ignite things, but rather allow you to push us to be salt and light in the people's lives that we come in contact. God, have your way in this invitation time. In Jesus' name, please stand.